justice and a better quality cat food without the fishy aftertaste. And who might these visitors from another galaxy be? I'll tell you, they're a breed of extraterrestrial feline crime fighters known to the world as space cats. Stationed in a hidden location deep beneath the Earth's surface is the Space Cat's secret headquarters. Its location is so secret that even the Space Cats don't know where they are. It is here that they monitor the world above, utilizing the latest Space Age technology and watching cable TV. Their highly evolved senses and exceptional hygiene make them the perfect crime-fighting force. The Space Cat's motto is, we always get the bad guy, or not. Diligent, alert, and hardworking, the Space Cats are always on the job, except for Tuesdays and certain bank holidays. Led by Captain Catgut, their commander and softball coach, the Space Cats wait to receive the orders that will affect the lives of everyone on this planet. Orders sent to them from their home planet by an alien game show host, the Great Dork, the disembodied omnipotent ruler of cats. Join us now as the Space Cats prepare to receive their latest mission. Hello? Testing? <coughs> Testing. All right. Attention, Space Cat agents. This is your captain speaking. I have a few announcements to make. Now, firstly, when you guys are off duty and you go up to the surface of the Earth for visits, do not wear your Space Cat uniforms up there. We're supposed to mingle and look like normal Earth cats. Secondly, when using the recreation room on the third floor, try to pick up after yourselves. We've been finding fur balls and squeaky rubber mice all over the place, and it's disgusting. They're all wet and everything. Thirdly, and this is most important, whenever you... Oh, 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 oh hold that thought! Incoming message from Dork. Man your positions, cat. Or is it cat your positions, man? Whatever. Tuning you in, my disembodied leader! Was I interrupting anything important? No, sir! Oh, darn, I, I was hoping I would. Well, sorry to disappoint you, sir. For you to be able to disappoint me, I'd have to care about you in some way. Uh, what is it about me that you don't like, sir? Perhaps I could change. It's your species. I don't like cats. Never did. I feel better knowing this. It goes back to when I was a little floating head. My mother wouldn't let me have a pet. She would say, you can't carry a cat around in your mouth. Well, you can, but it's not pleasant. Enough about me. Let's get down to business, shall we? Watch the screen. This is Professor Hugo von Stucker, world-renowned scientist, explorer, and denture wearer. An avid golfer, Professor von Stucker once created a chicken that laid golf balls. The chicken was seriously injured, however, when the professor decided to take a bowl. The professor was also a leader in the aerospace theme. He invented a way for astronauts to play the accordion in the vacuum of space. Wow! This guy was talented. Talented indeed. He was a genius. The professor's many inventions include an electric toupee, battery-operated shorts, and a nuclear-powered doorbell. Brilliant. Unfortunately, Professor von Stucker is missing, and we can't find him. Did you try putting his picture on the side of a milk carton? Just shut up and listen. The professor was last seen in the lower jungles of the upper Amazon, where he had discovered some ancient native secret. A secret so secret that, well, I can't say, because it's a secret. We suspect the professor was kidnapped. 
Golly! Just find Professor von Stucker. He's a pretty important guy. Dork. Captain Catgut quickly assembled a special space cat team uniquely qualified for this mission. Dom was selected to be leader because of his honesty, high principles, and because he kisses up to Captain Catgut. Assisting Tom in this dangerous undertaking are Space Cat agents Scratch and Sniff. For his many courageous exploits, the great Space Cat hero Scratch has been highly decorated. Sniff has been in training for this mission by doing intensive work in the Space Cat gym. <laughs> Yes, the space cats. They're brave. They're mighty. They don't fly. <laughs> the untamed jungles of South America. Dangerous, mysterious, and partly cloudy with a chance of clearing by noon. It is here where Professor von Stucker was last seen alive. It was here he made the discovery of his lifetime. How to transform an ordinary substance into gold. And it was here, he mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Space Cats prepared for their most dangerous assignment yet. Any clues who captured Von Stucker? Dork thinks it's a ferocious native chief named Guacamole Yuck. Keep it down, guys. This is a top secret mission. Get out of here. Such snoops. Okay, give me three first class tickets to Bingo Bango, South America. Bingo Bango, <laughs> you can't get there from here. In fact, you can't get there from anywhere. Impossible on your budget. <laughs> Undaunted by those discouraging words, the resourceful Tom charted his own course. We'll start here and go directly to here. From here, we go there. Then here, stopping there, but not there. Then from here, we backtrack to there. Being careful to stay away from there, which should ultimately take us here. Any questions? Yes, the short one in the front row. Is it me, or is anyone else hungry? In order to reach their remote destination, the Space Cats employed every mode of transportation available. Eventually, the Space Cats reached the mouth of the treacherous Amazon River. Hmm. According to my map, we should have come to the fork by now. Here it is. Oh, great. I was worried that our map might not be correct. Why wouldn't it be correct? Because I didn't renew my National Geographic, and they might have sent me a bad map for revenge. I say, tickety-boo, nice action shot of you lads. I wonder if I might have a teensy snap of you with that deadly 46-foot snake. What snake? That one. Great shot. Closer together. That's it. Say cheese. Cheese. Might I introduce myself? I'm Chesley Pipshire, noted explorer. You chaps just passing through? Going in jungle. Oh, my, my. Wouldn't do that if I were you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Never come out alive. Oh my, yes I can, dear boy. If you're ever in London, call on me for anything. Theater tickets, soccer, name it. Well, ta-ta. Oh, and do stay out of that nasty jungle. Chesley Pipshire, explorer and frequent talk show guest. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for getting us out of that tight squeeze, Sniff. Good thinking. What good thinking? I'm allergic to reptiles. <laughs> and the space cats proceeded, knowing that no jungle horror could deter them from their mission. No perils were too perilous. It was as if someone didn't want them to find the professor. But who and why? We 
got a job to do. Nothing's scaring us off. We're the... Guacamole yuck, you dead meat. What dire fate faces the space cats? What will guacamole yuck do to them? What's the capital of South Dakota? Stay tuned. The extremely thrilling adventures of the space cats will return after these messages. And now, back to space cats. My favorite program. As you recall, our space cats were being held captive by Guacamole Yuck and his Grabutek warriors. Speak. You must tell us everything. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know anymore. Honest. Honest indeed. For the past three hours, Guacamole Yuck forced the space cats to tell him everything they knew about every TV situation comedy they'd ever seen. Okie dokie, me believe, got him down. Hey, wait a minute. I do remember this episode of ALF where this woman comes in and she... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Guacamole Yuck and his warriors were helplessly hooked on sitcoms. Ha ha, me like hear more sitcom. <laughs> no hear more sitcom me angry <laughs> I don't get it he didn't say anything funny and they're laughing it's the sitcom influence they think a laugh track is part of real life true enough when guacamole yuck says just about anything his people laugh like a TV studio audience be hungry. Hey, Guaco boy, uh, any idea where we can find Professor Von Stucker? Frizzy hair, thick glasses, thicker accent. Size 33 briefs, busted elastic waistband. Him gone. Probably couldn't handle all the hilarity. Any idea where we might find him? Him taken from workplace. Me show. Boy, it's creepy in here. There is message, Professor Reed. Him only one understand. Him then able to do gold trick. Nobody laugh, no like. What was that? Somebody closed the entrance. That bad. Rock doorway, 53 tons. Give bad hernia. Oh, no! We're sealed in here forever! Me no way out, but very dangerous. Well, then don't just stand there, Chief. Lead the way. Maybe lead way, maybe not. What do you mean, maybe not? What's with this dip guacamole? You laugh like in sitcom when guacamole yuck talk, and I show you way out. No laugh, find own way. The Space Cats decided it was a small price to pay to avoid a permanent tomb. How much farther? Long way. I say, long way. You laugh. Oh, sure. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> that better. <laughs> oh, stop it, Chief. <laughs> And so it went, as they perilously picked their way over the pit of horrible crawling things. This place, the pit. <laughs> they proceeded to the razor edge of doom. One false step and they could be split in two. Talk about close shaves. <laughs> But everything they had encountered so far was child's play compared to the Chamber of Cute But Rabbit Bunnies. Don't go near. Bunny bite fatal. You die. <laughs> and far more terrifying than all was the flowing temple river of used gargle water. Our heroes deftly cross a bridge made out of ancient dental floss. Get it? Bridge? Floss? <laughs> hey, look! There's a hole! We can get out! 
Me no see hole. Hey, you no laugh. You laugh. Sorry, Guac. You've heard of the last laugh? Well, our last laugh was your last laugh. Let's squeeze through, crew, because we're the... Tell me, old boy, but it's the big cheerio for you. Yes, with their incredible perception, they knew they were hearing a familiar voice. Look, it's that explorer guy. But who's that other guy? Wow, it's Professor Von Stucker. Wow, indeed. Professor Von Stucker is in a terrible predicament. Will the space cats be able to rescue him in time? You'll find out when we return. The <laughs> Space Cat will return after these messages. And now back to our show, Space Cat. When we last left, our heroes were watching renowned explorer and talk show guest Chesley Pipshire threaten Professor Von Stucker. See that fire belching volcano out there? if you don't give me your recipe for turning something or other into gold. Come on, we got to get the professor out of there. And quicker than you could say, ah! The space cats were inside the Stonehead's cranial cavity. Unhand him, Pipshire. Oh, fiddlesticks. It's you tiresome cat things. Let the professor go and get back to your talk show appearances. <laughs> Sorry, chaps. Either you depart, or the professor croaks with the queen's necktie. We can't risk the professor getting strangled, even if it is by the flag of an admired ally, a cornerstone of the free world. And that should take care of any nasty letters from the United Kingdom. Ta-da! And when you're in London, don't ring me up. I hate cats. was about to experience the most horrible moment of his life. Except when he had to sit through an ice show twice. Tell me the secret of the gold, or you'll do the breaststroke in lava. I will never tell you. You are a naughty person. Not only naughty, but unmindful of the approaching space cats. Heads up, Pipshire! <laughs> You okay, Professor? Yeah, but who is you kitty people? Where the... <laughs> Forget it, we'll tell you later. <laughs> I only wanted to be the richest man in human history. Is that asking too much? I wanted to be famous. But you said you were a frequent talk show guest. <laughs> and I... Later that day, Professor Von Stucker shared his incredible discovery with the space cats. Ah, uh, just what is this common everyday substance? Bananas. You turn ordinary bananas into gold? No. How did that rumor get started? I take gold and turn it into bananas. I'll show you. Give me anything gold you got. Your gold watch. That pin. And your gold ring. And there you got a nice, good-tasting banana instead of gold. Try some. Professor, this is, uh, really nice, but could you turn the bananas back into gold? What, are you crazy? Gotta go. I'm working on a way to change diamonds into almonds. 
Glad to see you're not wasting your life. And once again, the mighty space cats risk life and limb to make the world a better place to live and eat bananas. And now it's time for our space cats' words of wisdom. Bananas are an important source of potassium. But I like to eat them because they have appeal. <laughs> Until next time, we're the... Will the Space Cats return after these messages? You bet. Stay tuned. Those are the OTC LS2 TV power is taken on. Eight engines kindling. Wow. The other cat did copy on that group. OTC is here. Go ahead. The first is still on. Copy. CDR, OTC. Roger. Flash that speed line heater's coming off. OTC CDR, that's complete. Copy. I'm excited. Didn't give me the call to do it. I ain't gonna do it till they call me. Open the radio at 1126. Copy. All right, fellas. Secure all these items. Got that icon recorder going, Leroy? Yes, sir. Bench down your laptops. Get your cabs in now. Cabs coming. Okay, let's just go for ET, LO2, pressure, face up. Start with the shake of your life here. Yep.
That is right. Oh, wow, look at that. Throttle. Coming back. You bet. I see a three at 67. Roger. One on three. Go for second stage. Kimiko. Looks good. Your display. Right of that. Hey, you may open your visors. Sue it off and open your visors if you want. He is coming down. Hello, 60. Connie Houston, performance now. Performance now. Awesome. Okay, 2 minutes 45. Columbia, two engine banjo. Two engine banjo. Yeah. Yeah. Guidance looks great. Two minutes 45. Uh, 40 degrees. It looks wonderful. Yes, sir. Turn up on 10K, we want theta 10. It's 59 nautical miles. I see theta 10. 58 and a half, looks good. Okay, engines are good. APUs are good. Rest of the ATO will be at 11 1. Okay, bunner man. Andrew Panjul, 109 at 11 9.
Rogers, your trans. Columbia, Group Banjo 109. Roger, Group Banjo 109. That puts us clean over Troop. I see reflections of the uh, fire out of the overhead. Uh, that's great. Don't tell me about it. Uh, Rock 17. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it reflecting also. Fuck that off of your suit, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Minute and a half, Kamiko. Single engine press. I'm going to use the Single engine press 104. Single engine press 104. Standing by for throttles. Okay. About 2.7, 2.8 GA right now. Just to check, West. Okay. Okay. Tethered. That's good. Well, it was tethered. <laughs> Mark. Keep the way, Mark. Yeah. It looks like it came off the channel. Stand by, Mr. Stand by for throttles. Stay on the throttle. Roger. Keep check at Mark 21. Stand by, Mark. Six. That's good. <laughs> Engines are good. Okay. Mark 22. Dredge looks great.
you know, I don't remember all this stuff on that. It is everywhere, man. Yeah, there was a lot on my side for a while, and now I saw some on your side. What about the, uh, the number of jet firings? Is that pretty nominal for right now? Like a fair amount, but, uh... people on the ground now. Yeah, that is for sure, don't you know? Yeah. What's that? It wasn't me on 51. <laughs> you are vindicated. I am vindicated. Uh, Carl, did you get the uh, TV power off? Oh, not yet, not yet. Where we pitch up? Hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Hey, bud. Hey, it's okay. Stand by on the battle satellite. Battle satellite. Light, light is out. out. I see pressure's low. Okay, and we're go for the ET photo. That was correct. Left in the ball again. I'm pitching up two degrees a second. Uh, are you in position to call me to stop if I get to it soon? Yeah. Uh -huh. 